Last week, we talked about academic music librarians, but this week I want to focus specifically on academic librarians who work in branch contexts. The 2009 MLA survey of personnel characteristics showed that about 55% of librarians in the MLA work in a branch library, either a music library or a performing arts library. 23.9% or nearly a quarter worked in a separate music or performing arts collection housed within a larger collection. Uh, you can think of this along the lines of what uh, UWM has had for many years. And about 20% worked in an integrated collection with no separate service point for music. So the music collections is fully integrated into the rest of the library. The 2016 survey suggests that things are pretty stable, except that here we have 10% who reported other, so a little bit less in the branch category and a little bit less in the integrated collection. Um, and instead, about 10% suggest that they were in other kinds of situations. Um, looking at the list of specific responses, of those who responded other and wrote in a, a explanation in their 2016 survey, um, many of them were part of a centralized cataloging office. So either within the main library or uh, off-site completely. They were responsible for music cataloging, uh, but weren't located in the music branch, even if there was one. A number of others reported being part of an institution that only had a music library. There was no main library, um, only a music collection uh, at conservatories, for example. Or they were part of special collections, worked in industry, or had broader branch libraries that went beyond music or performing arts. The question of whether departments like music, but also uh, law or sciences or other fields that often have branch libraries, the question of whether these should be separate branch libraries or should be integrated into a main central library on campus um, has been a controversial one for many years. You can find articles on this controversy going back probably 50 years or more in the literature. Um, and there are a lot of arguments to be made for the branch libraries that we can see reflected in the 55% of music librarians who work in a branch library. Um, probably the most often cited is just proximity and convenience. The branch libraries are often located in or very near the departments they serve, so within the School of Music or an arts building. And they allow users to stop in quickly to get the materials they need. This can be especially um, important with things like music where schedules can often be very demanding. They often also cite flexibility as a pro for branch libraries, that because they serve one particular patron base and often have less bureaucracy and less hierarchy than a main library, music libraries and other branch libraries can respond quickly to patron needs. So if there's a change in schedules of ensembles or um, a need for new materials or spaces, uh, branch libraries can more quickly respond to that without uh, going through the bureaucracy that you might find in a large library. Also important is the ability to offer specialized staff and equipment. So staff that is all trained to respond to music reference questions, for example, or to deal with uh, playback and recording equipment that might be offered. Branch libraries, because of these, these other criteria, the proximity and the specialized staff, they often also are credited with creating a sense of community, um, and because of that, with student retention. So people often see branch libraries as a place where music Students and faculty can stop in quickly where they might hang out. Uh, I think one of our readings for this week describes a particular science library as a, a second student union for students in that discipline. It becomes a sort of a social center as well as an academic center for the discipline. Um, and that also allows staff to create connections with users who they're seeing regularly and who they have particular interests in common with. Um, which can encourage students to come back to the library and to ask for help when they need it. So there are a lot of ways that branch libraries can contribute to the success of a department and to the sort of uh, sense of community and involvement of the library with the community of the discipline. 
On the other hand, they are often integrated either fully or as um, in many cases, as we saw in the statistics, there are many cases where libraries integrate the music collection while maintaining a separate service point. Um, but those integrations are often done to save money, essentially. Um, maintaining a separate building or space can be very costly, uh, both in terms of maintenance and infrastructure, as well as duplication of technology and staff. So if you have to have an additional um, set of computers, printers, staff members to keep a space open off of the main library campus that can have far-reaching budgetary effects. Often branch libraries are also integrated into the main library retroactively because of space issues, because they run out of space in their branch location and because it's often located inside of an academic department, there's nowhere to go. There's no space to expand. In other cases, Technology motivates libraries to keep all the subjects integrated in one place um, they, because it offers access to technology that, for example, music students may only sometimes need or may not be specific to music and therefore are not, is not located in the music library. Um, and having the library collections integrated means that everyone has access to resources on the same hours. Often integrated main libraries are open for much longer hours, even 24 seven in many cases, whereas smaller branch libraries can't be open for those hours. There's not enough demand to keep them open for those hours. So having the music collection or into other collections integrated into the main library means that music students have the same degree of access to their materials as students of other disciplines. Keeping the collection together can also be really helpful in avoiding duplication of materials, especially as fields over time have become more and more uh, interdisciplinary so that historians may need music materials and musicologists will need history materials and literature and so on. Uh, music education students may need access to education materials and vice versa. So of, you can avoid that duplication of materials that you'd have to have to make those materials available to student to all the students who need them. Because this is such a controversial issue, the ACRL um, in the 70s and then again in the 90s has maintained a list of criteria for evaluating whether branches should be independent branches or should be integrated with the main collection. Um, so this is a list of the criteria summary of the criteria that they give in the 1991 uh, publication of branch evaluation criteria. So notice that some of them are these questions of things like proximity, the geographical location um, in relationship to the primary clientele, um, and the requirements for hours and staffing and technology. Um, but this also indicates the need to consider things like cross-disciplinary needs and then the needs of the total academic community. And of course, operating costs and space and equipment requirements. So the ACRL suggests evaluating branches by these criteria to decide if they should be integrated um, or if they should be maintained as separate branches. Branch libraries can vary really widely in size. So in some cases, a music branch library will have many staff members. Um, in other cases, it might be a sort of one person show. So the responsibilities of running the branch library may fall to a single person or they may be divided among several staff members. Some of these librarian responsibilities will really be similar to what you would do as a subject liaison or subject specialist in a major in a main branch library, in a main uh, central library. For example, uh, collection development in music and sometimes other arts instruction responsibilities in those areas, uh, providing reference services, cataloging of music materials. 
Uh, these are all things that will be done both by music librarians in a branch and music librarians in a main central library. Um, branch librarians are maybe more likely to take on managing a, a website or social media account because a separate library is more likely to have separate websites and social media presence. Um, but there are several other responsibilities that often fall on branch librarians that don't typically fall on um, subject specialists in a main library and they don't really relate directly to the subject specialty. So things like staff, staff supervision, including supervising student workers, um, dealing with the space of the music library, furniture, equipment, facilities and cleaning, um, emergency management, security, um, all those things that you have to do when you're responsible for running a particular space are typically not put onto the music librarian when they're a subject specialist inside a larger library. Um, physical processing also is more likely to fall under the librarian's responsibilities um, in a branch. So dealing with incoming materials and binding or uh, putting clamshells on CDs, that kind of thing um, is more likely to be outsourced to someone in collections when you're working in a central library versus a branch library. So one argument often put forward in favor of integrated libraries is that it can spare the music librarian from having to deal with all of these areas that are not directly related to music and therefore free them up for greater emphasis on things like instruction and collection development, um, especially as I think instruction is becoming a larger and larger part of many uh, subject specialists' responsibilities.